Well, obviously a few weeks of practice now, I guess. And just your assessment of where the team is right now. You still got a month before the season. That's where you're at. You know, what what has been happening pretty consistently, and I'm really not sure why, I go to practice and I'm generally not pleased. And then I go back and watch the tape and I'm generally surprised that it was a little better than what I thought. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't think we're playing as intensely. I think that there are times when we succumb to fatigue, that I'm always trying to challenge their mental toughness. Um, and then I go back and look at it and say, God, I thought that wasn't quite as terrible as I thought it was. So um, I'm trying to figure out, I'm not even sure what that means. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying going to practice every day. That's a really good sign. I can tell you that I've been with teams where um, it wasn't always as much fun to go to practice. Uh, we haven't had a terrific amount of adversity. Obviously, we're still undefeated, so you know we, we don't know what it likes. To, we don't know what it feels like to lose. Um, and uh, we've remained fairly healthy, which I think is really important. Uh, Malcolm Kanda uh, tweaked his ankle for the second time uh, in the last two or three weeks yesterday, so he'll probably miss a couple days, which which does hurt us because. Um, you know, right now we've got 10 guys out there on scholarship that are playing. And if you look, and Dan may even run some numbers on this, I probably average nine guys double-digit minutes. And there have been years when I've had 10 guys in double-digit minutes just the way we play. So that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for error, as, you know, as far as the, uh, you know, the injuries are concerned. And then uh, Todd Golden has done a, a terrific job uh, with, uh, with analytics. Uh, I'm probably looking at more film grading and statistical analytics stuff than I ever than I had before. I'm pretty old school, but I love to watch film and I love to grade film. I just think it's really objective. And uh, pretty consistently, Taj Shamsuddin has graded out as our best player. Um, he, uh, he is always in the right place at the right time defensively. Uh, he puts up productive offensive numbers because he's able to kind of create off the bounce a little bit. He's making shots. And I told the team that right now he's our best player as far as how he's performing and what we're doing analytically. Um, is that a good sign? Um, you guys saw Taj last year. I think he was probably Auburn's third best player. And so if he's now our best player today, again, what does that mean? Is that not a good sign? Um, or has he gotten better? Is the system a really good fit for him? And it's not. We're just talking after a couple of weeks. Um, so those are just a few things that jump out at me. Is that, is that happening primarily with Taj off the ball, and how has he looked in practice off the ball? I think, you've, that's, I think that's it. Um, in talking to some of my coaches, he's just tickled pink about being off the ball. You know, um, We still put him in ball screens. We still put him in things, situations where he's attacking and handling it. But it's not the primary ball handler. He's not the primary playmaker. He doesn't have to break pressure. Just go score and wreak havoc defensively. And so I do think the change, uh, and that change was done for two reasons. Let's see if it's the right, what's the right move. But it's a good point as to what why it might be. Um, it was done because Casey Ross Miller and Malcolm Canada are both really good with the ball and not as good without it. And so to figure out a way to play them, I had to put the ball in their hands, which meant I had to put somebody that did have the ball in their hands and take it from them, and it was just Taj. So it may it may work out, and I think it's working out, where the, the, the guys are in the positions that they're supposed to be in. Has there been anything that you have done in the past that you maybe have not been able to do with this team, or have you even found tougher than what you've done previously? We, we, we can't throw the ball in the rim. Um, we don't have many guys that can go get at the rim. We're not very long. And my Tennessee teams were always really long. And if you watch Kentucky or if you watch the NBA or you watch you know, some, of the, some of the better teams um, that play above the rim, that's a, a, that can be now a high percentage pass. Um, that the way help comes over and rotates. Um, if you can put guys above the rim, there aren't that many that can get there defensively. And it's a real high percentage play. We don't have that many guys that can play above the rim, so therefore we've got to fit that ball in those narrower windows down on the floor. And uh, 
and could probably lead to more turnovers than I would like to have. So that's probably been uh, a little disappointing and limits you somewhat. How's Bowers come along? Is he in, in the shape you want him to be and run the floor and getting down? Um, I think that right now Simeon and Matt are playing the center position. And knowing how both physical and aggressive both those guys can be, we'll probably need all 10 fouls. And so even though the, there may be times you'd say, well, gosh, you know, one of those guys probably warrants more minutes. Um, right now I just don't have the luxury based on the numbers of playing them together because they're the only two inside players I have. Um, that you would, you know, call in, you know, true inside players. Um, so right now in practice, they're playing against each other all the time. So they rarely get rest. Um, when they play together, and I get them to play in shorter spurts, it's like rotating defensive tackles. You know, if, if you've got another guy in there that can go in that next series, then you rotate those guys. They're just fresh and they're furious, and then they're playing at a different tempo. So I'd like to see both of them go harder, go faster, go longer, be more explosive. And uh, I don't think either one of them are in the kind of shape that I'd like them to be in. Um, when you say that, though, uh, to be in great shape in middle October um, can wear you out in February and March. I don't, they got to get there, they're not there. But I'm okay that they're not there yet. Bruce, how have you told Simeon to train and prepare as far as just physically? Because are you are you telling him to prepare a certain way for maybe a 15 game stretch as opposed to a 30 game stretch? Is there a difference in, in how you're telling him to approach the, maybe the first two months as opposed to the whole season? Um, not really, as far as putting a number of games on it. You know, right now we haven't determined a starter between Simeon and Matt, and. Simeon and I have talked about why we haven't determined that situation yet. Uh, part of it is because Matt's probably a little ahead defensively and Simeon's ahead offensively. Um, Matt get, gets fouled a lot, but they both get fouled a lot. Um, and so the question comes up, you know, what do I need to do to start? And so the answers oftentimes are filled with, you know, be on time and on target every day. Like, I want emails from teachers telling me what a great job you're doing in the classroom. I want, um, you know, I want perfect attendance at study hall and, and all those other things off the court. And then, all right, let's improve your defense and rebounding to go along with what you're doing offensively. So it's not just stuff on the court. And, um, and, and so he understands, that's the, and that's truly how I, I will evaluate him. And um, uh, one thing that's been you know, pretty good is he, they, they don't seem to worry right now about where they are and who's starting and how many minutes they're playing. Right now they're, they're competing pretty well, but starting to inquire, okay, how could I maybe get a little bit more of a focus? Chris, what, what are your thoughts on the league as a whole, you know, the SEC heading into this season? I think there's great energy in the league, uh, and I think the momentum comes off the of last season. Um, you know, we've got four teams in the SEC West ranked in the top five in the country. It's, it's unprecedented. You know, how many of those teams can we get in the national championship final four? And I hope it's two or three teams. Clearly, it's, you know, we have four, four teams. Of the, am I right? Isn't that accurate? We have, is that right? I mean, we have the four best teams in college football. They, have, they ought to play the playoff right now and call it a day and let the SEC West determine who's the national champion. I don't even see it's close. You guys are smiling. I don't think it's close. Um, you think I'm going to piss somebody off because I'm saying that? <laughs> I think you're talking We're talking about basketball. Yeah. I'm, talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about football. It's not even, it's not even close. Um, but, okay, we did have two teams in basketball play in the Final Four last year. In basketball. And so when I talk about the energy and the momentum, there's great energy momentum that our league has with... Kentucky and Florida playing in that championship, and Kentucky being preseason number one, and oh, by a long shot, I mean a long shot. They're in the SEC, in case anybody was wondering, okay? They're in my league. Um, and I see three or four other teams that preseason um, could be knocking on the door for the top 25. The top 25 came out about two or three weeks ago, and I tweeted, 
you know, something along the line. Mark my words, there will be two or three other teams in our league that will be in the top 25 at the end of the year. I really believe that. Um, and so beyond that, uh, there's a bunch of teams that are going to be fighting for being on the bubble. And um, I'm hoping that we're one of those teams. What is a bubble? A bubble gets you in the middle of the league. You know, and can we get there? Can we go from the bottom of the league to the middle of the league? And um, get into the middle of the league, and they start talking about possibly postseason. That's what my goals are, you know, for this team. I want to still be playing in postseason. And, um, and I want that for these four seniors.